At this time, I'd like to introduce the founder of G-Captain, the most visited maritime website in the world, one million readers each month, the author of the bestseller, Fire on the Horizon, and U.S. Coast Guard licensed Master Mariner Unlimited, and distinguished alumni of SUNY Maritime Academy, New York, John Conrad. Thank you, John. Thank you, sir. Well, I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to proceed here. I started with Dave this morning with that rousing speech and now jokes. I, I'm not a good joke teller. I, uh, you know, and I get a little nervous up here. I mean, I'm a ship captain. I'm not a speaker. And I, I have the propensity to cry. My daughter Eleanor is here. She said, Dad, please don't cry this time, all right? <laughs> so I'm going to try, Eleanor, but I can't promise. But I, I have to bring you guys up with the reality of the current situation. And, and not all the news is good. We've heard about the World War II Mariners and the fight they've had for decades. But we haven't heard much about today's Mariner and the struggle they're going through. Well, who am I? I'm John Conrad. I write G-Captain. As John said, one million readers a month, reading three million articles. And people ask how I do that. Was it an overnight success? And I said, no, you know, the first two years, only my mom read it. You know, it wasn't, wasn't this huge success right away. But what I do is I, I write controversial articles. I write articles that get people's attention. And I get punched in the face a lot for it. You know, it's not the popular thing to, to tell people what they don't want to hear. But we got to hear the truth, right? I mean, the truth is what we're here for. Dave was telling the truth yesterday, and we've had speakers today tell us the truth about the veterans' affairs and what all our World War II Mariners have gone through. Um, and I, I think I like it a little bit. I like getting punched in the face by the admirals and the congressmen and being told I'm wrong and having the facts to back it up. And I think a lot of Mariners here are fighters. You know, uh, Dave told us today you know, his life story, and there's some similarities. He's from South Philly. I'm from the Bronx originally. We're both authors, uh, had, had books. Um, we both care deeply about you. I mean, what's most important? It's our time. Coming down here to speak to you guys, because we care. We care about these topics. And uh, we were both, we're both dashingly handsome at the age of 15, <laughs> Dave. I mean, absolutely dashingly. So we were both Merchant Mariners. No, and, and we both have, both of us have the wit and energy of a 42-year-old, both of us. So I appreciate all your, your energy and support here. But there's, there's one more thing I think that Dave and I share in common. And um, I don't know if, if anyone ever told you this, Dave, when you were young, but this is, what, this is what I heard most often at Fort Schuyler, the Maritime Academy in the Bronx. And I don't know the vernacular in the 40s, but in the 90s, it, you know, the term for what I was was called a wise ass. Did, did you ever hear that, Dave? <laughs> wise ass. Once. <laughs> Once. <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm a mariner. Um, and and that's, that's a term I've lived with for, for many years and what became a journalist. Now they have other words for, for that. My, my wife's an educator. You know, a curious student, and they have uh, an advanced learner, they call them. And they have special programs for the kids like me. Um, but, you know, it comes down to questioning everything. And that's, that's what I'm here about, is questioning who in this room is a veteran? Who in this room is a hero? Who in this room deserves to wear this hat? And it's not something... I take lightly. So I know Dave and I are both Merchant Marine veterans. Are either of us heroes? Are there heroes in this room? I, I know I'm a, I'm a wise ass. 
I'm pretty sure I'm a veteran. But what is, what's a hero today? In this world today where everyone's a hero, you turn on the news and everyone who has served is a hero, and we're not even acknowledged. And the veteran, I've heard a lot of people say, you're not a veteran. I took this hat, and I wore it on the YouTube channel. I think that's where Chris first found me. And got a lot of comments saying, who are you to wear this hat? Some of them were from our own brothers and sisters at sea. So I, you know, do I deserve to wear this hat? I looked up the word veteran, and here's what the dictionary tells you guys. A veteran, a person with long experience of service or war time efforts. So that, that doesn't tell us too much. I think I qualify there. So I, I went to the, the military guys. They're always the first to say, you guys aren't veterans. I hear that all the time from the Navy guys, particularly. So I asked the servicemen, I asked officers, I asked every single rank up to three-star admiral, what is a veteran? What's your definition? And I heard one comment, which I liked, and I suggested it to the other, to the three-star admiral. And he loved this. He loved this. So uh, a commander told me, uh, a veteran in the military is someone who writes a blank check to Uncle Sam, payable in his life. Wow. I thought that was impressive. Have you guys seen the El Faro? Yeah. How old was the El Faro? Old. 40 years old. And the Coast Guard came up huge, spent millions of dollars investigating the El Faro. And they found she was too old. Now, is this something we're just learning? Robert Frump wrote an amazing book about the Marine Electric back in the 80s some. Do you know what their number one finding was of the Marine Electric? She was too old. It was a World War II ship sailing in the 80s. She'd been modified too. Absolutely. And we got all these mariners now going out and sailing. Last week, the sister ship, the older sister ship of the El Faro, which the Coast Guard a year ago, multi-million dollar investigation said the ship was too old. Well, she just cracked her hull in Oakland Harbor. Last week, still sailing, after the Coast Guard said she was, her sister was too old. So you go out in the middle of the ocean, beyond the helicopters, beyond the rescuers, beyond the ambulance, and on a U.S. flagship, is that not someone who writes a blank check to Uncle Sam payable in his life? So then, you know, I'm not a lawyer. We want benefits, right? Everyone here wants the benefits, the recognition. So that's a legal definition. I looked up the CFRs, 38 CFR 3.1D, part three, subpart three. I had to get a lawyer to find this one. A veteran is a person who served in the active military or naval service. That's the, that's the federal definition right there. That's what the congressmen are looking at. Naval service, what's that? It's not the Navy because they're active military. They're on the first thing. So I looked up naval in the uh, Oxford's Dictionary, and it says of or pertaining to ships. <laughs> sounds, sounds like we qualify. I'm not a lawyer. But... I still wasn't sure. So I went back to what I know. I know someone who is a veteran. Sorry, Eleanor, I might be failing here. <laughs> I know a veteran, uh, a merchant marine veteran, a war veteran. I know this person intimately. It's a young merchant mariner that was on an ammo ship in the second Gulf War. Now, it was in a container ship filled with ammo for the army, going to the Iraq War. Now, she was told one bomb in one container had more of an explosive power than an entire B-24 Liberator. One bomb in one container on the ship 
ship was packed with thousands of containers. Now, they were told to bring it from the United States to Iraq on this ship. This 30-year-old rust bucket that the company who owned the ship prior was going to scrap it when the U.S. gave them millions of dollars to keep it in service. Now, this ship has no medical facilities, just basic, you know, uh, medicine. There's no more doctors there, no nurses, none of that. No special bomb training. They have firefighting, but what do you do if the bomb explodes? A detachment of armed guards was put on this ship. Didn't tell the captain what they were shooting at. They got shot at, the detachment shot back. The officers, this was the second mate, didn't even know what happened. Full CBRD gear. Now, you look at the mariners, you know, in World War II, there were a lot of unknowns, and I've talked to the veterans, a lot of unknowns, but today's mariners, was anyone expecting 9 11? Does anyone know what the next major incident is going to be? These guys are sailing today without the knowledge of what's going to happen to them, but they're given the gear, you know, they, like the hazmat trucks with the shields and the thing. And they're told they got to wear this going into the war zone. Well, a sandstorm comes on and hits the ship, and suddenly they all fill with sand. They weren't given the training or the advanced equipment. These are supposed to be sealed ships. They're too old to be sealed. And this particular ship got into the war zone. Navy calls them, says you're entering a potential mine area. And the engine dies, three days drifting in the mine area. Did the Navy send a support ship? Did they fly in a special boiler or equipment to fix this engine? No. This is not ancient history. This is the second Gulf War. This is recent. There are mariners today going out and serving on these ships with no veteran status. Now, I was, I was impressed by this individual so much. This person who just takes no, no, no crap from anyone, right, as most of us mariners do, that I, I proposed to her when she came back. And uh, she's my wife, Eleanor's mom now. And they gave her a medal. It's one of two benefits. Do you know what the other benefit she gets for risking this life, for going through this, this, this war? They say she gets all this extra pay, but the second that George Bush landed on that aircraft carrier and said the war was over, which was the start of the war, all Merchant Mariner pay, war pay, ended. They went back to regular seaman salary. And they didn't even get the bonuses. So she gets one benefit. She gets to be buried in a veteran's uh, cemetery for her service. Which I'm proud of, because it'll say, uh, second mate, Cindy Conrad, US Merchant Service. And then on the back, in teeny letters, it'll say, Captain John Conrad. <laughs> Which, which is great. You know, she's undoubtedly in my mind a veteran. But I signed up. I called my union. I called them and I said, I want to go to the war. They said, we got enough mariners for this war. We don't need you. So I was never shot at. I was never in a war zone. Am I a veteran? No, that's the question. And a lot of people say no. When I went up on the video, Got a lot of comments. Navy guys universally said, take that hat off. A lot of mariners did too. And that's why I'm wearing it today. You're not supposed to wear a ball cap with a suit, I'm told. I don't think that's the etiquette. But I'm wearing the damn hat, and maybe it's because I like to be punched in the face. I don't know. You know, Chris here is from Wisconsin. 
And FDR said, and some people attribute it to Truman, that uh, farmers make great mariners. Farmers are hard work, and they wake up in the morning, and they till that soil, and they go for it. But I never heard anyone say mariners make great farmers. And I think that's because we're fundamentally different. When you're a farmer, you, you, you buy that land, that piece of land, and that's your land, and you put the seed in that land, and the storms come, and you say, screw you, my plan's here. And you talk to your senator and congressman, and you say, I'm not moving. This is my land. It's here. Us mariners, we don't want that. We're just like, please let us go across the ocean without another storm. Please. I don't want that. I don't want another storm. I don't want things rocking. Just give me safe passage. We'll go around. No problem. And I think that's part of our problem. We've spent too many years going around. The farmers are very good lobbyists. They're very in their face. And they're, I'm here. And we have to do more of that. But we also have to understand what the problem is and what the opportunity is. Does anyone know the opposite of love? What's the opposite of love? Indifference. Some people said hate. That's the most popular answer. If it... <laughs> He's good. That, and marriage is a love-hate. You know, Chris Rock says you don't love someone until you want it. And it's true. If, if, you get a, if a woman, you get her annoyed or she doesn't like you, you can, you can move that. But if she wants something to do with you, just not interested, do you have any chance? Very little. And that's what Congress is today. They don't know us. They don't care about us. That's what the American public is. But I've talked to the Navy. I've been to Washington. I talked at the Navy War College. They flew me to Bahrain, around the world, and I've talked to the Navy guys. You want to know what they asked me? They said, how come you, JCAM, get the answers before naval intelligence in the Pentagon? When the, when the uh, Captain Phillips in Merck, Alabama, when I, we broke that story and I called the ship up on the satellite phone and the second man answered, it's in Mersk, Alabama. I said, this is John from GCAM. I love GCAM, but we're a little busy. I said, okay, okay, you're busy. Half an hour later, you know, all the Daily Beast and all the uh, internet things. Said, did you really talk to Mersk, Alabama? I said, hell yeah, I did. Can we have their phone number? I said, no, they're busy. <laughs> An hour later, it was the New York Times and CBS. Did you talk to them? Yeah. Can we have their number? Hell no. Two hours later, Pick up the phone. There's naval intelligence in the Pentagon. Did you talk to Mersk, Alabama? And I'm worried about that black car outside. Ready to take me away? I'm like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. I didn't know. He said, no, can we get, can we get their phone number? I gave them the Mersk, Alabama satellite phone number. They don't know us. And it's our responsibility, though. When we tell them, when I wear this hat in Navy circles, they say, you're not a serviceman. They get angry, some of them, or confused. And we can use that, but we got to be honest, and we got to get up, and we got to work together. You know the thing I love, talking about love and hate, what I love most about being a mariner, ship captain, the thing that, that, that's exciting me the most, and I didn't realize it, it's subconscious for years, I finally realized is when, we, when the ship goes out in the ocean, when we're in the ocean, it doesn't matter what happens at home. Global warming could flood North America. You could have power outages, tornadoes. You could have the zombie apocalypse. We don't need shit from anyone. We're mariners. We can take care of the problem. You want, and I got a buddy who's one of these uh, preppers, right? He's, you, you guys know one of these prepper guys. This guy was one of the founders of Facebook, has $100 million, and he's worried. He's worried, and he's like an environmentalist guy, you know, and he's, he's very liberal. And he said, John, he calls me for advice. What should I do there? What, you know, and I tell him, and he goes, John, you're not worried like the other people I talk to. There's no nervousness. I said, no, I'm going to go out on my boat. 
and I'm going to find a ship if there's something happens, and I'm going to be okay. I'm going to take my family. He goes, John, what are you, what are you going to do for, uh, what are you going to do for, for, uh, for water? So that's a good question. I got a hundred gallon tank on my boat, you know, and that should get me to the ship. But if you go down the tropics, you can collect all the water you want and, and you can be fine. And he says, okay, John, but what are you going to do about food? It's a long way to the tropics. You're going to carry all that food. It's freshness. And, and I said, Nick, you know, um, you know, I, I have a shotgun. What I'm going to do, I'm going to shoot a, I'm going to shoot a dolphin. You're going to shoot a dolphin? <laughs> I said, no, no, I would never, ever shoot a dolphin unless the zombies are, if the zombies are coming after my kids, flippers are going to go. But that's what they don't understand. But this self-sufficiency that we have, that we don't need anything but ourselves, this has caused the problem. We don't need Congress. We don't need the Navy support. And as Dave said, it's our fault. We don't need anything. We can take care of ourselves, the strongest guys out there. But it's not about us. So I want to talk about Hero just briefly. How am I doing on time, Chris? <laughs> Next question I asked, and I already started to tear up with my wife, but uh, sorry, Eleanor, this one always gets me, is the hero, the word hero. What is a hero? You want to have a definition of hero? Everyone's a hero today. You turn on the news, it's a constant story is a hero. You see if a cat, it's a hero. But Dave here, Merchant Mariners, you guys have witnessed real heroes. What is that? What is a real hero? I don't consider myself a, a real hero. But I wanted to know, what is it? Why? Because the military, they don't respect us. Even the definition of veterans, but they all respect the word hero. And that's what they use today to say all these, and they keep giving more and more benefits to service members. And I'm happy about that. But they say it's because they're heroes. We got to support our heroes. So I wanted to use their own terminology. What's a hero? And the definitions I'm not even going to talk about, they're, 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 they're terrible. But... Like my wife, I knew a hero. I knew a hero who had two bronze stars and was buried in Arlington. Served in two wars, Vietnam and the war in the Bronx. Now, many of you don't know this, but the Bronx is burning in the late 70s, early 80s. John, how many fires have you seen where people were jumping out of windows in your life? Two. My dad was going to three a night. Three a night. If you turn on the uh, World Series from 1977, the Yankees game, Howard Cassell gets out and there are fires all up in the Bronx. He says, gentlemen, the Bronx is burning. And they used to take me as a kid. We couldn't find a babysitter and now I can't even get my son a ride on the, with all the safety regulations on the fire truck. I can't even get him on the fire truck. But I used to go in the Bronx with him. Seeing people jump out of windows, die. And, uh, the, uh, my dad was in rescue. Did the rope rescues and the heavy rescues. And his truck mate died. They banned doing the rope rescue. Rope broke. They banned it. It's no more rope rescues. A couple, uh, about a year goes by. And there's, a, there's a guy. And I don't know if you've ever seen the flames coming out of a window. But it'll get people to jump. They'll jump rather than burn because it's so painful. This guy was ready to jump. So my dad called down, asked for permission. Permission denied. So he grabbed the rope and went down. Anyway, I got to meet mayors of New York and senators. His, his picture was on the cover of magazines and newspapers multiple times. 
No, there was never any financial reward. I grew up poor at Salvation Army in the Bronx. We had no money. But he didn't want that. He didn't want a reward. The angriest I ever saw him get was when they called and said he had won this award to go to the award ceremony. Give it to my crew. Give it to the other guys. I don't want this. Well, I want to tell you, I, I don't want to wear this hat. I don't. I don't want to have to come down here and explain and go to Congress and explain to congressmen why we want benefits. I don't. I don't want to be a veteran. I don't, I don't want all this recognition. I don't want people to come and tell me, thank you for my service. I just personally don't want it. But my dad, he, they said it was doing, doing one in the bag is what they called it. That's when a fireman died. They have to get all dressed up in their uh, suit. And he had the biggest stack of medals in the whole fire department. They'd have to go down, march in the parade. And every person we passed, thank you for your service. And every fireman seeing all the medals. Wow, I didn't realize how many medals you had, Jack. And my dad hated it. So I don't know the definition of a hero, but I know that a hero does things he doesn't want to do. He didn't want to jump off that rope and save that guy. He didn't want to get the medal. He didn't want the recognition. He just wanted to do something for his fellow man. He had the training and the talent, and he was in the position to do it. So that's what I say. I don't know if we're heroes or not, but I know we're veterans. And I know when we get out uh, into the ocean, we don't need anyone, but we need ourselves. And the World War II guys have been the focus, and they need to continue but as we look to the future, I want to make sure that there's a legacy, that people remember Dave Yoho and all the World War II veterans out there. The only way that's going to happen, though, guys, is if we start recognizing the Korean and the Vietnam and the Gulf War and then our peacetime mariners, because there really aren't many of us. There really aren't many of us. We are the Merchant Marine. We gotta be proud of that. We don't wanna be proud of that. We don't wanna wear the, the suits and the ties. We wanna grow our hair long. We're rebels. But this isn't about us. I'm not here for me. I'm here for you guys and the other Merchant Marine. And I, I know some of you guys, you know, it's hard to talk to the younger generation and get out there, but that's what we need to do. And I encourage the, this uh, organization to get more hats printed and hang it out to the, especially the disbelievers. If you go out there and you talk to a guy and they're out there, there's so many of them. It says, I'm not a veteran. Give them the hat. Give them the hat. And I, I would love for, for that to happen. So heroes don't want anything. But that doesn't mean they can't do one in the bag. Put on the hat, the uniform, because if we don't support each other, forget Congress, forget everything else. We don't support each other, and it starts with the truth. The truth is the tears they brought out this morning with all of you, and I'm not as good of a speaker, <laughs> but I brought them out of myself today. I don't want to be up here crying in front of you guys. I didn't want to take my daughter out of class, but it was important to meet you guys. So we got to engage and tell. The Navy's not going to do it. Congress isn't going to do it. We have to contact every merchant mariner out there and let them know they are veterans too. They deserve to be proud. Thank you. 
let the sea roll high or low. We can cross any ocean, sail any river, give us the girls and we'll deliver. Damn the submarine, we're the men of the merchant. 